This is one of the coolest pieces of petrified wood I've ever come across. We need to build something cool with it. This is a real fun project. I did this all in one night and I want to share it with you guys. Bending steel with a system like this, here's the trick. You want to bend at a consistent speed rate. If you go too slow, the radius becomes more pronounced. Consistency is the key to rolling out steel to change its shape. Checking the radius, if you'll know I stacked these all up to check the radius, this was a mistake because the radius changes as you go through the stack. What I ended up doing was going back, I didn't film this part, of just using one piece of steel, my pattern, and then match all of them up to that one particular one. Here we are setting up the three legs. We're just kind of putting them in a general area, just to feel how this looks. You know, it's this kind of a crapshoot when you're just doing things off the cuff like I am here. I'm going to tack in a couple of these curved stretchers, see how they look, see how it feels. It's, and if it's looking good, then we go to the next process where we re-straighten and make sure the legs are parallel and measuring the exact same distance that I need to make everything weld up really easy. Then I take straight stretchers, pack them into place to hold it all together. All this is being tacked together with the TIG. Um, what's great about this, it keeps the weld bead really small. Also, I'm going to TIG weld this whole base together because I do want to keep the weld bead small. MIG welding would be a lot faster, of course, but then you have a lot different cleanup process, and I want to keep this as clean as, as I could. That's what I like about the TIG process is it's slow to weld, but quicker to clean up than it is any of the other processes. Being that the base is these three pipes, well those pipes can cause a lot of damage and dig into wood floors, so we need to cap them off. And I didn't have any round stock to cap these off with, so what I ended up doing was just taking square material, tack welding it into place, grind it off, 
and then re-weld it and then drive the welds again. It's a slower process, but at the end of the day, you have to work with what you've got. This kind of looks like that, that Christian symbol, you know, the fish. But do you know where the story of that came from, of why that shape is? Well, it came from the time that Christians were being pursued and prosecuted for their beliefs. Well, when you met somebody on the street and you're having a conversation with them, and if you want to know they're a Christian, what you would do is you'd take your toe, write an arc in the dirt. If the person across from you noticed this arc and also was a Christian, what he would do, do an arc in the dirt and connect the dots, and you end up getting kind of that fish symbol. And that's where it came from. So just a little bit of uh, trivial history there. Now it's time to go into the finished process, and we're going to do a rust here. We're going to start out with muriatic acid. The muriatic acid does two things for us. One is it cleans the steel, the other is it etches it, and the etching is really key here. I usually dip the parts. I don't have a bat large enough thing in, so I'm just going to spray it on. Then I go in with this instant rust formula. I don't have the formula correct right now, so I'm not going to share it with you, but I will say it has uh, salt in it, vinegar, and hydrogen peroxide at a certain ratio, but it's still not right. The rust comes out very orange, and I don't like that, and it doesn't dig in deep enough, quick enough for me. So I'm still working on the formula, and when I do have a good one, I'll share it with you guys, but I do have to kind of rinse and repeat. Muriatic acid, instant rust, water, do that a couple times. The finish comes out pretty good, but it's still on the orange side, but what is the saving grace here is the clear finish, when that goes on, it darkens down that orange, gets it into that richer tone. If I let this thing sit out for a couple weeks, I'll actually get the dark brown rust that I'm really looking for, you know, that you see like on old, old cars out in the desert. So here we are putting the top on. Now here's the story. Here is the, uh, what do I want to say? The problem. The stand I built was not built heavy enough to handle the stone. That stone weighs about 175 pounds is my guess. And being three legs not well supported, the base can actually twist. So if you were to bump up against it, well that front leg will actually twist out from underneath it. So unfortunately it won't handle the weight of the petrified wood. So I'm going to build a different base for it. But I thought you guys would like to see this base. It's beautiful. I'm going to actually put a smaller walnut slab on top of it. I think you guys will really enjoy it. I'm not going to do a video on it, but you will be able to see it on Instagram and Facebook, hopefully fairly soon. So I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, give me some thumbs up. Also, don't forget to subscribe. If you're already subscribed, thank you. But have you clicked the little bell? If you click the bell, you get notifications of when my next video is out. All right, guys, till next time, go out in your shop, build something cool. Thanks.